The Week in Space. CBS News selected color coverage of the mission of Gemini 9. This morning, the second attempt this week to launch astronauts Stafford and Cernan for the start of their three days in space. Reporting from Cape Kennedy, CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning, and it is a good morning down here at uh, Cape Kennedy. The skies are virtually clear, certainly far better than they were on Wednesday when they tried to get Gemini 9 up uh, for the second time. The weather downrange, some 1,300 miles out in the Atlantic, where the astronauts would have to land if anything went wrong during the launch phase of the operation today. The weather down there is good, too. The aircraft carrier WASP, which is standing by, reports to us. The astronauts have been in the capsule for over an hour now, waiting for blast off and everything control, is proceeding. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. They've already fed information to the uh, to the spacecraft and they'll go even if it should malfunction again today, however. Uh, but they do believe they fixed it. It was in a, a little a tool, small transistor module, so-called, less than an inch square, uh, that uh, were in the relay box of the computer we, uh, this is Gemini change. Launch Control, now T-minus two minutes and 30 seconds and counting. We have word here in the control center that the spacecraft computer has accepted the update information from the Mod 3 system. Uh, of course, information has also gone by hardline to the Gemini launch vehicle. Now T-minus two minutes and 15 seconds and counting. The Air Force Eastern, Eastern Test Range has given the blockhouse an OK to launch at this point. Coming up at T minus two minutes and counting. to stay here with the voice of Jack King. This is Gemini Launch Control, T minus one minute and 40 seconds and counting. We have a report that there was a switch over in Houston, but now we have confirmation that the update data is in the computer. We, the computer has accepted this update data, T minus one minute and 30 seconds and counting. Wrong, Ed. minus one minute and 20 seconds and counting. All appears to be proceeding well at this point in the countdown during the final phases. The astronauts have been alerted and we have gimbaled those engines as planned. The engines have swung the first stage engines and our checkout still continues at this point, coming up on one minute shortly. T minus 60 seconds and counting, T minus 60. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. We will get ignition at zero in the countdown. Some three seconds thereafter, liftoff will come. During that period, there will be a period of about 1.8 seconds where we possibly will have the capability of shutting down if necessary. T-minus 35 seconds and counting. T-minus 30. T-minus 25 seconds and counting. We're on an automatic sequence. Everything appears to be going well during this final phase. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have ignition. We have a liftoff. Looks like 39 minutes, 32 seconds after the hour. We're right on time for rendezvous. This is exactly when they wanted it. Roll, pitch. 17 seconds. Flight dynamics reports the thrust looks good. The roll program has started. The roll program is completed. The pitch program has started. To get into the proper azimuth, the sun catches the rocket beautifully, goes through a little layer of clouds. Magnificent launch, it looks like Gemini 9. Time is up at 3933 after the hour. Gemini 9 looks like she's well on her way. 50 seconds into the flight. The spacecraft and its booster are moving at 740 miles per hour. We are now reaching for four nautical miles in altitude. 
just about go, to go through maximum Q, that maximum buffeting that the spacecraft gets as it uh, hits the atmospheric layer about eight miles high. Gone through max Q just now. Eight plus one minute and 20 seconds. Spacecraft is now approximately eight nautical miles in altitude. The track looks good. We are about five nautical miles downrange. Our next critical moment is the shutdown of the stage one engines of the Titan and the ignition of the stage two, the 100,000 pound thrust stage two. Those big engines should be shutting down at 230. 45 seconds and we are 12 nautical miles downrange and approximately 16 nautical miles in altitude. The track still looks very good. Those big, those two big engines of that first stage booster, with some 430,000 pounds of thrust, gulping almost unbelievable quantities of fuel. T plus two minutes, 20 seconds. The flight crew have been notified that they are go for staging. They're on their way, all right, and that uh, first stage cutoff should come just now, the right now. is now about 52 nautical miles, 50 nautical miles downrange, and about 36 nautical miles in altitude, and we have Biko. You can see it there. Cut off. A magnificent the picture. Thrust looks good. The track picture, looks that good. That long-range camera, you can see the flare. There's a flare as the booster engines... Eight plus two minutes, 50 seconds. First stage is cut off. Second stage has ignited properly. Everything going exactly right now. They've got 100,000 pounds of thrust for the uh, next stage of their journey. Right. Up officer the reports that the track looks real good to him. This uh, picture is from something called... Like dynamics and guidance and search and all report. They look good. The spacecraft now is approximately 120 nautical miles downrange and approximately 60 nautical miles in altitude. They should have jettisoned uh, their second stage about now. Flight uh, Dynamics says we're right down the middle. Perhaps I missed the announcement. They should have had a jettison of second stage at uh, 3 minutes and 15 seconds into the flight. Tremendous picture of them the there still. Is now about 70 nautical miles in altitude and approximately coming up on 200 nautical miles downrange. The track looks good, excellent. They also have a heat shield around the spacecraft, similar to that uh, shroud that perhaps did not jettison Flight on the target vehicle. Trans has just completed a final status check. We are green and go, and that information has been passed on to Tom Stafford in Gemini 9. In just a minute from now, the second stage should be cutting off. Gemini 9 uh, is now 280 nautical miles downrange and approximately 80 nautical miles in altitude. Those miles you see there on the screen are nautical miles, statute miles, it's 80 miles high now, a little over 80, almost 90 miles high. And some 215 miles Plus downrange. Five minutes. Track looks excellent. Another less than a half a minute now. Is following our plot boards here perfectly. And now about 20 seconds to second stage cutoff. Point eight. We have reached 80% of the velocity needed for orbit. Flight Dynamics says the trajectory looks very good to him. This orbit that they hope to... Uh, Five minutes and 30 seconds. ...be injected into is 100 by 168 miles. Elliptical orbit, so-called. They should have had now second stage cutoff. Let's listen. Seco, the second stage engine has cut off.